What's up guys, welcome to Runch Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at SoFi stock, ticker symbol SOFI, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Thursday, May 9th. Alright guys, SoFi stock here today essentially flat, down 1 cents a share, minus 0.14% in regular trading hours. It's down a couple extra cents in the after hours. Listen, after hours volume is going to be very, very low. You can see that right here. Take a look. So, listen, take that with a grain of salt wherever it may end up here heading into, uh, I, I suppose, the open tomorrow morning. When we're dealing with off hours, guys, stocks are easy to push around. Um, and that goes for the upside as well. So, so always take it with a grain of salt unless there's substantial volume behind a move, which typically occurs more on like earnings. But listen, let's take a look. We're going to start with a quick little volume profile analysis, checking under the hood to see what kind of bias exists, uh, if any underneath the movement that already occurred we'll take a look at the psychological levels that the big money is going to be paying attention to so we need to as well implied volatility particularly important if you're trading options the expected move and we'll finish out with the directional bias heading into tomorrow so let's do that let's take a look on the five minute chart at that volume profile we'll start here going from left to right from open to close you can see here quite a contextual open now listen, SoFi is going to be a little bit different because we're dealing with slightly lighter volume than a lot of these blue chips that we're kind of used to taking a look at. But there's still plenty here to get data. Now, we can see with higher volume open, volume quickly falls off. And then we have a mixed bag of these single pop candles. Don't read into these too much, at least in my opinion, when you have these poppy bars. When you're looking at like a blue chip, you're dealing with a lot of either fooled by randomness or battle bars which is a lot of buying a lot of selling and typically big wicks on the candle that doesn't tell us much okay so what we're really looking for is there are consecutive bars that are out of context for that time of day now what we see here is a lot of back and forth on the, uh, red pop green pop red pop red pop green pop green pop honestly guys really the only bias if you're going to twist my arm, that I'm seeing on this chart at all is perhaps a slight amount of bearish bias heading into the close. Um, but, I mean, really the truth is on these bars also, into the close, not only are you going to see rebalancing, but there's also some wicks, okay, which is going to be a bit of buying volume in these candles pumping up the volume as well. So I I'm not comfortable saying it's substantial, but it's there. So look, let's move on here. Let's start taking a look at those psychological self-fulfilling prophecy levels that, um, you know, the traders, the big money as well, are going to be paying attention to, so we need to watch. And we'll start here on the uh, very simple 30-minute chart. Listen, by the way, guys, SoFi is today's wildcard stock. Um, I upload a wildcard stock every single day, and those get voted on by you guys in the comment section. So listen, my goal here is 10,000 subscribers. If you're getting value out of these videos, I appreciate you subscribing, and I'll keep the videos coming. So now, kind of an interesting one here on the 30-minute today, you can see... That we bounced off the open, it was sloppy, but we bounced hard off the 200 period, and then we rejected off the 50 period a few times, arguably three or four times throughout the day. So listen, tomorrow, this channel's a little bit tight. It's really only like five or six cents wide at this point. It's time for this thing to make a decision. Bulls. Any downside test of that 200 period, I want to see that hold. Ideally, I'd like to see the 200 period really get to at least seven start curling back upside to kind of beef up that level a little bit. And then I want to see the 200 period hold. But the, really the goal as a bull is to get up and out of this channel to the upside, of course, um, above the 50 period. Okay. Now, bears, any upside test of the 50 period, you want to see that reject. And really the goal is to break downside through the 200 period, which also gives up seven bucks. All right. Now, the four hour chart you can see is kind of in little bit of a different situation here this here is what the bulls would really want to see however bulls a couple of things i'm sorry the bears right the bears what you guys would really want to see because what ideally the situation would be that you have both the 200 period and the 50 period descending with the 50 period acting as resistance adding that psychological barrier back to the upside right and driving things lower okay so any retest of the 50 period bears you want to see that reject and then we'll talk about seven on the daily chart. But bulls here on the four hour in particular, you know, you can see here that currently we're almost 2% away from the 50 period and almost 4%, about 3.8% um, away from the 200 period. So listen, if you're bullish, I think we can look 
at these as kind of separate entities, the 50 and the 200 on this one, because they're far enough away from each other. The goal really is to get back upside above the 50 period, driving through it on high volume, retesting it on lower volume, and then bouncing again on high volume. That would be a great start, but knowing, understanding, right, that the ultimate goal is to get back above both of those to get out of this uh, situation, which you have to understand that the bear is looking at that just psychologically. They're going to like what they see on the four hour. Okay. Now the daily, let's take a look at the daily guys. This is so clear. The 50 period is the nearest moving average and it's above 740. So yes, if that comes back into play, I will be paying attention, but truthfully, we are currently in the battle of seven bucks a share. It's sloppy. Both sides have had an upper hand at different points. But listen, Bulls, any test of seven, I don't want to give up seven. I don't care if we test it 25 times. I just want to bounce away from seven, eventually seeing a high volume drive away from $7 a share. Whereas Bears, your only goal here is to get back down in the sixes and start treating seven as a consistent resistance. Now, implied volatility, you can see here, guys, that it's a little bit flat today, but in recent time, this has fallen. Compared to the last couple of months, IV is very low. So if you're, if you're trading options and you, you purchased them and you're holding them, if you're experiencing IV crush, this is your culprit. But at the same time, if you're looking to purchase new contracts, when IV's lower, conditions are arguably more favorable because you're paying less Vega value up front, right? Now, expected move on this one. We do not have the luxury of daily expiration, so let's take a look. The expected move by the next expiration, which is Friday's close, is plus or minus 25 cents a share. That's the expected move by Friday's close compared to today's close. Okay, so what we can do here is we need a little bit of guesswork. Okay, because again, we don't have daily expiration. So what we can do is divide that by two and then add back 50% to make up for the fact that just dividing by two assumes two red days or two green days. But 50% is arguably a little heavy. So when we only have two trading days left in the week, like Thursday, Friday, and we're trying to kind of come up with an expected move that's being expected by the market for tomorrow's close, like Thursday's close, I like to look at this as more of a range because if we add back 50% after divided by two, we get about 18 or 19 cents. But again, that might be a little heavy because we only have two variables, two more trading days. So I like to look at this as a range. I'm thinking the expected move being priced in by the market here for tomorrow is approximately plus or minus 15 to 18 cents a share. Okay. Now, again, that's the market's volatility expectation. And if you disagree with that, that's actually a good thing because that opens up opportunity for you to position yourself to be correct versus or against the market's expectation, which is, I mean, realistically how you make money in options. So you're probably thinking like, okay, well, that's great. But what about the, the directional bias? Well, let's look at volume, right? 126,000 contracts traded today, approximately 84,000 of those were calls, 41,000 were puts. So we're seeing a call side bias on the overall now, volume gets a little bit light when we start looking at the short-term speculators, um, but it's still worthwhile to take a look at, right? The 0 to 20 delta range, those short-term speculators, approximately 32,000 calls and about 10,600 know, puts. So it's really 31,750 calls and 10,600 puts. So that's a, a, real, uh, a relatively uh, heavy call side bias out of the short-term speculators, as well as a call side bias on the overall ratio. Listen, if you guys get value out of these videos, I ask you to do one thing. It's free. Takes half a second. Leave a like on the video and then get out of here and enjoy your day. I greatly appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.